flavor of raspberry pi by myself swastik and other partner the mithul so first before going to session yeah is my my slides are visible right yeah okay thanks so before starting with the technical stuff of the recipe pair all the like we will just go into like what all was before like for the creation of recipe pair so we will first go into the history of recipe pair actually your slide seems to be stuck now now is it moving Okay, yeah, yeah. Now it, uh, I think it's because of the internet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Internet might get bad sometimes. Okay, so we'll start. Like, so coming to the history of Raspberry Pi. So it's like a, it's an interesting story, like how Raspberry Pi came into existence. Like there was a guy named uh, Ivan Upton. Like he was a British engineer. He he was he studied physics and engineering from Cambridge University, and he had worked in many um, electronic companies like Broadcom, Intel, IBM. So he had like he had done pretty much uh, stuff about engineering in electronics already. But once he like uh, observed that uh, uh, in UK at that time the schools you would like they didn't have uh, as many computers that they, that they should have. Like it was very costly at the time to buy a computer, so school couldn't afford all the computers. So but he thought of that he he thought of making a small project. Then like. Uh, he started the project in 2006 and he thought of completing it like a small project like a small board based computer like yeah. it is a smaller device a low cost device but it will allow everyone to buy it and learn computing stuff computer science stuff on it like but uh, because at that time he was noticed that in uk computer science was the, one of the least preferred subject taken by engineers like computer professions were very less during that time in uk so he thought of like making a smaller device low cost so that everyone can learn computer science and they can learn computing on it and every even the schools the young students in schools till 10th grade they can also learn it so he started making the project like it took him around uh, from 2006 he started making the project and it took him around 5 years to 2011 to make the first prototype of raspberry pi so after that uh, like he formed the team and then founded the company that we now know call as raspberry pi foundation and then the first model of raspberry pi came into existence on 2012 i think the exact date was uh, 29th february 2012 the first raspberry pi model was released on 29th february 2012 so like uh, uh, the first uh, uh, preference like the first idea of making raspberry pi was to teach young students about uh, how to learn computer science but later it developed into being one of the main component of all the embedded systems and iot application in the industries like nowadays you might have seen in every industry they use raspberry pi different types of modules or raspberry pi different types of boards in every iot application because it's very easy to integrate it with iot so the main uh, idea of making raspberry pi changed from uh, teaching computer science to iot applications so this was like the basic uh, history of raspberry pi how it came to existence and uh, now now like i will just so somehow these are the some of the versions of raspberry pi that came like i told the first version came in 2012 it was called the pi 1 model b like their naming criteria is like this they give model b model a so like after pi 1 model b model a came in 2013 then slowly a plus b plus all the models came pi 2 model a model a b plus and everything came in the coming years even a zero double model was also there like there are different models like different types of architecture and all so it differ uh, like uh, for different industry applications also the models differ for uh, everyday users the models are different and for industry applications the models are different so that where many models have come and by now latest model is like 5400 like uh, it's released in 2021 i guess and uh, mostly the the people the students use it's the latest model is 54 model b like it came in 2020 in now if you use so from the time in 2012 when first raspberry pi model came till now like the there has been a huge change in the specification used in raspberry pi like in each version improvements came from time to time like the ram that is used now is basically comparable to a low range smartphones that you can buy like 
Okay, now is now is the slide visible? The versions of Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah, it's visible now. Uh, okay. Try putting it in screen sharing mode. Okay. Now, the versus Raspberry Pi slide. Yeah, okay. Ah. So basically, like I was saying, the there was a huge change in the all the versions that came from 2012 to 2020. Like uh, the, the version that come now, it can be comparable to a lower range smartphone also. Like you might have heard the smartphones that come for lower range of price, like around 15,000. They are 4 GB RAM, and you might have heard some technical stuff like LPDDR4 RAM. So everything is uh, available in today's Raspberry Pi models, like the Pi 4 model B. Like it has all the LPDDR4, 4, 4, and you can get a 4 GB model, and the memory is also powered by a, like a quad core processor on ARM Cortex based processor. And so, and it has all the connectivity and ports, like you have USB ports, you have Ethernet cables for internet, and you have the Wi-Fi ports, the Bluetooth ports. You can even uh, attach HDMI ports for HD video streaming. You can attach an OLED also. And there are like you can also attach HD card for uh, like for uh, for playing videos for playing songs. So you can do many stuff with Raspberry Pi due to all the new inter like all the new hardware added to it. So this was all stuff about like the history and all the versions of Raspberry Pi. Now we'll go into the technical stuff of Raspberry Pi. Now Michael will take over and he will explain all the technical stuff. I'm audible. Yeah, I'm audible. Okay. Good evening, guys. Okay, from uh, now I'll be explaining the Raspberry Pi hardware specifications. My name is Mithil. So yeah, let's get started. Do you know that the Raspberry Pi board comprises of RAM, CPU, GPU, Ethernet port, GPIO pins, XB socket, UART, power source connector, and various other interfaces? for other external devices. It sounds like a lot, right? Moreover, apart from all this, it even requires a mass storage to, for like an SD flash memory card so that the Raspberry Pi board will boot from this SD card similarly as a PC boots up into Windows from its hard disk. The additional hardware specifications of a Raspberry Pi board mainly include SD card containing Linux OS, which is very important for a Raspberry Pi, and then a keyboard, monitor, mouse, power supply, and video cables. Now let's look deep into each component specifically. Move to the next slide, please. Yeah, sure. Okay, the first component, which is the memory component. The Raspberry Pi, Model A board is designed with 256 MB of SD RAM, whereas the Model B is designed with 512 MB of SD RAM. Here you can see that it is a small size PC when compared with today's PCs, and it is uh, rather today's PCs are available in gigabytes, but here in Raspberry Pi, the RAM is available only in 256 MB or 512 MB. That's why an additional SD card is very much required. Now let's move to the CPU. Hello. Hello. Can you please mute yourself? Okay, fine. Now let's move on to the next component, the CPU. The central processing unit is the brain of the Raspberry Pi board that is responsible for the carrying out instructions of the computer through logical and mathematical operations. It actually uses an ARM 11 series processor, which can be in the ranks of a Galaxy smartphone from Samsung. Really interesting, right? Now let's move on to the graphics processing unit. The GPU is a specialized chip, the Raspberry Pi board, that is designed to speed up the operation of image calculations. This board is designed with a Broadcom Video Core 4 and it supports OpenGL. Next comes the Ethernet port. The Ethernet port of the Raspberry Pi is the main gateway for communicating with additional devices. 
It is used to plug your home router to access the internet and stuff like that. And next is the XP socket. The screen sharing stopped. And now is it visible? Uh, it's not yet visible. Okay, wait. Yeah, now is it visible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's visible. Ah, yeah. It's it's like, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was speaking about the XP socket. Yeah, the name sounds new, right? But it is nothing but a socket in the board which is used for wireless communication purposes. And then comes the power source, which is used to power the board via an external power source. That's it. And UART. The full form of UART is Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. It is a serial input output port that can be used to transfer the serial data in the form of text and it is useful for converting the debugging code. At last comes the display. The connection options of a Raspberry Pi port are of two types. They are HDMI and composite. Present day LCDs and HDTV monitors can be attached by using an HDMI cable and a low cost adapter. The outputs of the Raspberry Pi audio and video can be done through HDMI but it does not support HDMI input. And the older TVs can be connected using composite video pins. When using a composite video connection, the audio is available from the 3.5 millimeter jack socket and it can be sent to your TV. That's it about the hardware specifications. Now let's look into the pin configuration. Can you move to the next slide? Yeah, is it visible? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, yeah, fine, fine. Uh, I think there is a like lag due to internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now let's see the pin configuration of the Raspberry Pi. Here we have taken a Raspberry Pi 3 board, which is the most commonly used board. So it actually has 40 pins on it. Among these pins, there are eight ground pins, and all of these are connected to each other. So you can use any of these ground pins for your project. Then we have four power pins on the Raspberry Pi, two of which are five volt pin and other, another two are 3.3 volt pins. The five volt power pins are connected directly to the Raspberry Pi's power input and we can use these pins to run low power applications. That leaves us with 28 GPIO pins labeled starting from GPIO 0 up to GPIO 27. The GPIO pins, as indicated by their full form, can be programmed to be input pins or output pins. So we can set yeah, the of of each pin, input and output, and we can even read values from them. The GPIO pins can be digitally programmed so that they can be turned on or off. The output of any GPIO pin is 3.3 volts and can be used to control output components like an LED or a motor. These on or off conditions can also be interpreted as a Boolean true false one zero or high low. So these are the co common types of pins available on the Raspberry Pi 3 board. And you may wonder, some of these pins might even have a dual function, for example, the pin 3 or GPIO 2 pin can also act like an I2Z pin. So that's it about the Raspberry Pi pin configurations. Now I will hand over to Swastik for simulation of the project. Yeah. So since we cannot show all the hardware stuff in online mode, so we will go on to Proteus. Like you might have heard of the software called Proteus. Like it's a simulator based software. It is used to simulate uh, basically various types of electronic circuits using microcontrollers and every type of uh, circuits can be made there. So we'll be using Proteus for simulating the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so wait, let me share now. Yes, 
screen is visible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, in, uh, so uh, now you might not have Proteus installed in your uh, PC or laptop. So, but just uh, you can go through like how we design all the components and all the, how all the circuits. You might, if you want, you can download Proteus from internet, like in just Google, how to download Proteus, you'll get a lot of videos, how to download, you might get cracked versions also to download. So you can just Google and get Proteus installed and download all the libraries, then you can also play with it. So we'll just start a new project here. So it is also like how to start a project in Proteus also, just name the project. So while creating, we will we'll not will not use a PCB layout. We'll directly make it on the circuit. Like we'll not, for PCB layout, which is a different technique, so we'll not create a PCB layout. And while creating, since we're using going to use Raspberry Pi, we'll just create a firmware project. Like we have already Raspberry Pi installed in the software, so it will directly form a coding platform. Also, like IDE will form in Python. Like Raspberry Pi uses Python three for its coding part, so a Python three IDE will form on the side for you to code and compile together. Yeah. So, I can see this is the source code, like all the stuff is written before, we'll just delete it and we'll code from the beginning. So, as you can see, this is a Raspberry Pi module, like I have to explain before, it has all the 40 pins in this. The HDMI ports all are not visible, it, it only has the pins, like, which are important. So, you can see it's a Raspberry Pi 3 with all the pins. So, the project that we are going to make is, uh, basically, it's a simple project, we are going to make an automatic door opening. Thing. So it will be consisting of a basic sensor. You might have heard of PIR sensor. It's a passive infrared sensor. Like uh, it, it's a uh, like it uses a pair of pyroelectric sensors to detect the heat energy in the surrounding environment. So basically, there are two sensors inside the PIR sensor which detect the uh, like uh, like the, it detects the difference in the heat uh, when someone comes. So when someone is not there, the heat will be constant. When someone comes, the heat uh, there will be a spike in the differential heat. So it will detect that there is a person in front. So we'll use that sensor for detecting if someone comes in front. And then we'll just uh, use a DC motor for opening the door latch or opening the door. Okay, just a second. Huh. Yeah, so we'll be using this main component. There's a main component, the PIS sensor will detect the distance. Like it will check like if anybody comes in front. And uh, the motor driver, the DC motor will uh, move the door latch for opening the door if someone comes. It will open. So basically, it's an automatic door opener using a PIR sensor. So first, we'll gather all the components that are required for this. So in Proteus, basically, this is a component mode. You just choose and uh, find. We'll first find our. Uh, we'll first find our uh, PIR sensor. Like it's the main sensor, so we'll first find it. So the, after installing Proteus, you also have to install all the libraries regarding all the sensors. So PIR sensor won't be there in the first basic Proteus that you might have installed. So you might have to like install PIR sensor, like different ultrasound sensor, different libraries and put it in the library folder of your Proteus software. So you, if you want to do that, you have to take care of that. So we'll place the, uh, this is our PIR sensor. You can see there are like three pins. This is the PCC for the Power supply out is for the signal with the RPI and ground. And uh, I'm going to build together for all the components. So since we need a DC motor, so a DC motor won't work. So basically the motor driver that we will use is basically you can remember the name or you can just search directly you can search motor driver also. It's the name of the so, uh, motor driver is basically L. You can see uh, okay, there's different types of motor driver. We basically use and okay, it's not coming up now. Wait just a second. L two thirty row ninety three D. So the, ah yeah. So this is the motor driver that we are going to use for our DC motor. So we place the motor driver and then we place the DC motor. We will place a simple DC motor. 
Uh, which Raspberry Pi did you uh, select while creating the project? Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3, right? Fine. So like it might differ, like uh, mine is a Proteus version 8.11, right? So it might differ if you have installed a, a newer uh, like a Proteus version, then it might differ. You may get Raspberry Pi 4 also. But it will be the same. The coding is same. It's not too much difference. Okay, so uh, we have gathered all the components. So uh, we will also gather a LED also, like for indicating us when the when there is movement. So we'll also take LED. We can take a blue or green LED. Anything. We'll take a blue LED. Okay. So as you can see, all the components are gathered here. You can see the RPI is already there. The PI sensor for detecting a DC motor and the motor driver. So now we'll make all the connections. First, let us go to the LED. For LED, uh, we need to come, like, connect the negative part. The negative part is in the round part for with the ground. So we'll take uh, ground from the terminal and just connect it. And same way, we will uh, then uh, like uh, we are here. We are not going to use all the the wires that you might have seen. We used to connect uh, if we have used multi same software like for designing circuits. Or any other different circuits in the software, you use wires to connect to the pins. Here we'll directly use the terminals that are uh, the default terminals we will use for connecting to the pin. This will keep So we'll just bring the default terminal, we'll connect them. And suppose we take uh, for LED, we connect it to GPIO 4. So we'll just name it GPIO 4. So to directly connect without any wire, it's like a basic software to make to not make your circuit look messy because so too many wires would make it look messy. So you can just directly use this terminal. So the LED part is over. Now we'll connect the motor driver part. So for motor driver part, we'll uh, first give a supply like for the we need a power supply for the motor driver, right? So we'll first give a DC supply. So this is the DC supply. And we'll connect it to the VSS. Like the VSS is the supply pin, so we'll connect it to the VSS, and VSS will also be connected to that. And you might see there is a EN1 and EN2. So EN1 basically means enable. So the, this pin, when connected to the like the VSS uh, source pin, it will enable the motor driver to work with the DC motor to move the DC motor. Punching okay. What? Okay. Okay. Oh, what is that uh, small circular thing beside the PIR? Ah, uh, what did you ask? Oh, that small dark circular thing beside. Oh, that, that is a DC motor, right? That's the DC motor. It's a DC this motor. A, okay. Yeah, this is the motor driver. That's the DC motor. Okay, so now uh, so the, as i was saying en1 and en2 are basically the enable pins the, the enable pins are basically for when they are connected to the power source of the motor driver they will enable the motor driver to work with the dc motor so we'll just connect them directly to the so we'll just connect them to the source part so as you can see we'll just uh, set the source to 5 volt so basically in every microcontroller circuits, like in, even if you have seen Arduino also, in the, here also we always set it to 5 volt because it is the basic industry standard. Some might require 3.3 volt, but here we will set it to 5 volt. Okay, now the, this is done. Now we'll just connect, like uh, now we need the pins to be connected to the RPI. So the in one and in two pin are basically the input pins that we connect for taking the input from the RPI, like when the motor will work and till what time it will get delayed. So basically, we'll form this. Just a second. Yeah. So basically, we need to connect uh, the in one and in two to the GPI pins of RPI. So we we'll just take again. We will take the terminal. We we'll not use any wires and stuff. So we didn't take terminals. We we'll just place two terminals in front of them and just connect them. And we need to name the terminals according to the pins that we are going to connect to them. Like the next pin, GPI 17. So we we'll connect GPI 17. We we'll just write here GPI 17. And this also the next pin, GPIO 18. Okay. 
So we got the both pins connected to the R pi now. Now we'll just uh, connect. Like uh, now there is not much stuff. Like we need to connect the DC motor to uh, motor driver, right? So we just need to make a connection with that. So we'll also use terminal for that. Again, we'll place two terminals. So as you can see. So this is basically a DC motor working with the motor driver. So this has no direct connections with the R pi. The R pi is connected to the motor driver, and the motor driver will work with the DC motor directly. So we just need to connect them to three and six. Like you can see, out one and out two, right? So out one and out two were basically for the DC motor. So here we directly connect them. So here, since we have no pin named already, so we'll just name them motor one and. Uh, And this is motor two. The other two parts, like uh, this, both the components move the DC motor in both directions. So uh, only one at a time will move the motor. So you have to give uh, the higher output in motor one and then give lower output in motor two so that the uh, DC motor will move in a clockwise direction and vice versa with four anti clockwise direction. So here also we will take the terminal and here also we will put. Yeah. Now you have to take take care fully take care of the parts like that. we have to name them properly. So since out one is connected to three, we will just name it motor one. Since the upper part is motor one for moving it, and just use the same name so that it doesn't get near. Yeah. yeah. So now our motor driver and DC motor connection are done. Like it is also connected with the RPI and it is also connected with like they are they are both are also connected and LED part is also done. So now the only the remaining part is for PIR sensor. So for PIR sensor also, yeah. So I forgot one thing. Like we also will connect. We have to connect a ground also. Yeah. So we'll connect a ground to the DMO, DC motor. Also. Yeah. So now it's done. Now we'll go come to the PIR PIR sensor. So we'll take a ground for you first. Connect a ground to it. This is the first main thing. Then for the VCC part, we'll again use a DC source. Like we need, again, we are going to use a five volt source. Like I said, it's the mostly we use five volt sources for all this. So we'll set it to five volt. Yeah, so it's set to five volt. And for out, we'll again use a terminal and like we will put it to the pin that we are connected to the R pi. Like uh, the next pin is DPI twenty seven. So you can use any pin. I'm just using the serial pins for. Better visibility. Again, we put a terminal. And name it GPIO 27 since we are going to connect it to 27 GPIO pin. So now you can see we have connected all the pins of there might be a loose connection here. There was a little thing. If you want, we can even directly do the connection like with the wire and the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah, you can. Do yeah, you can do like it will make the player look messy, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why you use the terminals. Yeah. You can use directly. You can like you do in multi sim or you might, you might have seen Tinkercad also. Even in Proteus also, you can do directly the wire connection. But I use terminals. Okay, so uh, now all the connections are done, I guess. For uh, all the like, we have connected the motor driver with the DC motor, and we have done all the connections of the motor driver with the Raspberry Pi, and the Pi PI is also connected to the Raspberry Pi with all the GPI pins. So now we'll like uh, ahead on like, uh -huh, like uh, since this is like a simulation, so the actual PI sensor will not get any input. So what we do is we'll like, there's a test pin you can see. So in the test pin, we will just put a just a uh, the test pin will put a logic state. So basically, it will give it a logic state input output like zero and one. So one will basically say that it is detecting some movement, uh, like someone is coming in front of the door, and zero will state that there is no movement in front of it. So we'll just use a logic state for our input since we don't have any actual subject in front of us. Yeah, so as you can see, we connected it. So uh, after the, during the simulation, we'll just, if you turn it to one, then the PI sensor will get the input and then our whole system can run. 
So since all the connections are made, huh, again, one thing you have to make sure, like you have to put the hex file of the PI sensor into it before starting like coding part. Because like the hex files are basically like uh, the hex file was developed by Intel. It was basically made to like store the machine language code. Like you might know machines uh, like uh, can communicate between themselves in binary code. So the machine language code is different from the code that we write. So it's basically hex file is basically stores the machine language code in a hexadecimal form. So it is basically using microcontrollers and all sensors and all. So we just have to input the hex file in that. So I will just input the hex file. As you can see, I have many hex files. I will just input the PI sensor hex file. So as it is now, now every part of circuit is done. Now we'll just go to the source code part. I will just remove all this code. This is not my important. I'll just code from the beginning. Okay, so uh, here also you have to import many libraries into the GPIO like uh, for doing different stuff. So first we'll import. Uh, first we'll import time. So time is basically a library like it gives you a delay of a second. Like you might after uh, the PI sensor senses some motion, it will uh, trigger the DC motor and it will move. So you might need a time delay between the next time it senses the motion. So for that we import the time library then we then we just import the gpio pins like uh, for using the rpi gpio we just need to import this library okay and this command is basically for we are setting the mode to the board mode so Basically, we are using RPA as a full length board here. So, RPA can be used in many types. So, here we are just using it as a full length board. Yeah. So, we are just using it as a full length board. So, we'll just set it to board here. So GPI to set like it is used to set the GPI board like the RPI into a board form. It is used in many forms like you might have already, I told before. It's used in mini computer. So now we are just using it as a basically a substitute of Arduino. So it's it's in a board mode. So for setting it to board mode, we use this command. And then we have then we have the set warning commands. Basically, this command is basically for giving us any warning in case of any, like if we give a different, uh, like we have assigned the pins according to the circuit, right? So if you give a different circuit pin number in while assigning them in code, so it will give us a warning that we have assigned a different circuit pin. So uh, it will prevent uh, any, mis uh, like uh, we, we will not get error at the end, we will already get uh, told like uh, we have entered the wrong pin for the code. Okay, so all the initialization part is done. Now we will just, uh, make all the uh, initialization pins, like the LED pin as we see. So we can see the circuit. So you might see I have connected LED to GPIO 4. But GPIO 4 is basically the name of the actual RPI board. But here the actual pin that we have to connect in the, like we have to give in the code is basically 7. So GPIO 4 is 7. So we just enter 7 there. LED pin is equal to 7. And same with the uh, motor pin, like motor one. Like motor one, we like uh, motor, where is the motor one? Yeah, so for motor one, we you can see in one and out one, right? Motor one. So it's basically GPIO 17. So GPIO will just check GPIO 17 is 11th pin. So we just enter 11. And same with motor two also. And with motor 2, motor 2 is basically GPI 18, so it's 12. And now the last one is uh, the PIR sensor. And the PIR sensor is at uh, the GPI 27. So GPI 27 is basically 13th pin. So we have given in a serial order, so we can easily assign them here. Okay, so all the pins and initialization part is done. So if you might have done Arduino coding, there also we do the same thing. You have to first initialize all the pin numbers, like which pin are connected. Just here that here the GPIO pin numbers are different and the 
pin number on the board are different, so you have to take care of that while connecting it on. Now we have to just set, set it up. Like these are the common commands. You have to remember all these commands. Just take care that you give the same variable name, otherwise it will not run. Yeah. Basically, this is a setup command for the LED pin. Like we know that LED is our output command, right? So input will come from PIR and the DC motor, the motor one and motor two, and LED, all three are output. So we'll just set them set them to output. Same for others also. Just copy the same line, it's the same thing. Yeah, I just did it. Motor 2, since motor 2 is also an output. So now the for output part we have already set up the LED, the motor one and motor two pins. So now the remaining one is the PIR sensor. And PIR is the output pin, so we'll put it to input. Uh, PIR, sorry, PIR is the input pin. So we'll just set it to the PIR dot in. So they said it's, it means the input part. Yeah, so just check like if you have seen the variable is, yeah, everything is same. Now, now since our setup part is done, now we'll just enter the logic part. So uh, we have connected a logic state, I told, right? So we, we have to give like one or zero for that. So when while it is one, so when we have a positive input like from PI sensor that it gets some motion. So while it is one, so let's form a loop and So we'll form a conditional statement there. If we keep So basically we get input from the PIR sensor, right? So from PIR sensor we we'll get the input. Then input. So if the input is registered, so we will form the So basically everyone see right so i'm just setting it like if we get input from the pir sensor these are like basic commands these are you have to remember all these syntaxes but like basic commands if you get input from the pir sensor we'll just set the output to all the three like motor one motor two and the led pin so now and i already told like uh, motor one is basically for moving it clockwise and motor two for moving it anti-clockwise so you have to set one motor to like higher value like true and the other motor to fall so that only one moves at a time so, no, so if it moves both in true if both are set to true then both will move simultaneously in different directions so it will not move totally like the integer 10 factor will be zero right so you have to set one to true and one to false so we are setting motor one to true and then we will set motor two to false So this is set. Now the remaining part is for LED pin. So LED pin will uh, get detected all the time, so it will be set to true. LED pin has to indicate as like some something has come in front of the door, so it will be taken every time. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So as you can see, all the variable names are the same. Like, take care of that. So we have set it true. Now the remaining thing, like uh, I told, like we import time function for giving a delay of one microsecond or something. We will just give a delay of one microsecond. So this is like not microsecond. This is millisecond. Microsecond is a different function. This is millisecond. It will stop for one millisecond, then it will again continue detecting the. 
using the PR sensor. Again, we'll just put the same thing. S is part if it, if it doesn't detect one, so S part is for that. It is a simple conditional statement. This time, everything will be false since we don't want any data to come. Just set it to false. Yeah, and again, we will set the time the time step to one second. If it doesn't find also, then again it will move back to checking like if it got any input or not. So this is basically the whole conditional statement. Like we just input the PI sensor data and just we move the motor in one direction. So now, as you can see, now we will run the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think so. Probably some one of my code was wrong. Just take it like this. This happens many times, so we have to just take it like which was around. Yeah, I think the PIO part is correct. Okay, yes, already pin is correct and everything, I guess. Already pin is set to GPIO 4, so GPIO 4 is uh, set to 7. So, yeah, we, in, we have input at 7. Motor 1. Motor one is equal seventeen eighteen, so it's eleven and twelve. Yeah, it's correct. And PR session is thirteen. Okay, it's correct. Then now we'll just go on to the next one. The PR was set up. Okay, so. this one so when you get the input from the PR sensor just a second yeah so uh, the I don't hear Small mistake. We'll just see the error. We're sharing in line 17. So we'll check on 17. For some time, then it stopped. So probably we got an error. Again. Just a second, guys. I think. Uh, yeah, it Sometimes this happens, so you have to just check through all the code again, like for any small pin mistake or something. So. Then just wait. I will just show you the thing because I did this before also. I'll just show you the other one. Again, run the protest. Yeah, as you can see, this is the same thing. Yeah, 
this time I'm done it. Yeah, so we got, I think, uh, this was the file that I made before. This is running, that was not, might be a small mistake. The, you have to take care of all the LED pins there. So as you can see here, when we give a one input, the you can see the DC motor is turning in one direction. So, and the LED blue is also blinking. And if you stop this, if you give zero, the DC motor stops. So basically this is like, this is the, like, uh, you have to take out the code, like, there might be some error in this. So as you can see, this is the same thing that doing this I did before. The same thing, there might be some, like you have to take care of all the variables. There might be some difference in the variables and all. So you have to take care of all the variables, otherwise uh, it would not run. So as you can see, we can again check if it's give the input, like the logic state is one, like uh, the PIR sensor receives some input, like there is some uh, movement in front of it. So when it's one, it will give the, so the DC motor will run. As you can see, that this motor will now. And the LED is also blinking as blue. You can see that it is blinking blue, and the DC motor is also running. And if you set it to zero, there is no movement detected, so the PR sensor will give the input as zero, so the DC motor will stop. There might be some lag in there because the DC motor it gives the signals in very slow, so there might be some lag in there, but it will stop soon. Yeah, so. Yeah, this was it. Like any doubts, guys? Like in the code, I know, like uh, there was some small error in that. But, uh, that you have to always check all the values and also just take care of that. And any other doubt apart from that? It's like one of the basic project you can make. Like it's a very small project only. Like you can just use a. Uh, yeah, uh, while downloading the PIR uh, sensor module, we have to like install the three files and place it in the library folder of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like PIR, PEP, the, the sensor file for the whole Proteus mod simulation module and the hex file also. So just yeah. place them in the library mode. Okay, okay. Don't forget the hex file because the hex file. Mm -hmm. is important. So I will also paste the code there if you want to run it and run by yourself. And paste the code. Paste the code in the chat section. So if you want, you can download Proteus. Proteus is not like it will not take much time to download. You can download it. Just you have to find the correct one and there are all the libraries related to what you are doing. There might not be already the sensors might not have already been installed there. So if you want to do something related to some other sensor, you have to download its library also. You will easily find the library in GitHub or somewhere. So you can do that. And I also pasted the code if you want for future reference. Any more doubts there? Yeah, so I guess no doubt. So I guess next Mithul can take over. Like he will explain some more projects that we can do with our pipe. This was like a basic project, so more projects can be also done. So Mithul will explain about other projects. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, Swastik. Yeah. Okay. I will now be sharing my screen. Is my screen visible? Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, cool. Yeah. PowerPoint is visible, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Now let's see a few more applications using Raspberry Pi. Uh, coming to the first one, an IoT temperature and mass scan entry system. Now, as you guessed it, this is the time of COVID and everywhere this is used. So the first step to detect COVID is by scanning for fever. So that's what this uh, project basically does. We can also monitor every person for mask using Raspberry Pi. So here you might have temperature checking systems for every entrances for scanning, but manually also it can be done 
but it carries a lot of disadvantages like the personnel might not be well trained on using temperature scan devices or there might be a human error and many times people are not bad from entry even after higher temperature readings or no mask which is not the case when a microprocessor is used to solve this problem we can have a fully automated temperature scanner and entry provider system it is a multi purpose system that can have a wide range of applications so here the camera is used to scan for mass and the temperature sensor is used for measuring the forehead temperature it it is all connected to the raspberry pi which processes the sensor inputs and decides whether the person is to be allowed or not in this case the system operates a motor to open the barrier allowing the person to enter the premises if a person is flagged by the system for high temperature or no mask the system glows the red light and bars the person from entry also the face and the temperature of the person is transmitted over iot to a server for authorities where they can take action and maybe you know even test them for covid so this system can also double up uh, to work as an hand sanitizer dispenser to ensure that it is provided to all without any wastage thus the system provides an 100% automated system to prevent the spread of covid which is very much required in the present situation now let's move to the next application which is a desktop pc yeah you heard me right using just a raspberry pi a micro sd card and a power supply a simple desktop can be made additionally we might require an hdmi cable a suitable display maybe an old monitor usb keyboard and a mouse but believe me that's all needed to make a desktop pc using raspberry pi in less than 100 dollars moreover the newer versions of raspberry like the raspberry pi 3 has built in wifi and bluetooth so if the if a different model is used then maybe compatible usb dongles are required but otherwise it's not and once everything is set up and a preferred operating system uh installed like the latest version of raspbian your desktop computer is ready to be used in this you can use features like internet connectivity email web browsing word processing and spreadsheets printing and even you can collaborate with other external devices all these features are available via the raspberry pi's default operating system the raspbian stretch for some it may not be as appealing as a chromebook with built-in screen and webcam but as we always say the beauty of the pc is the freedom of choice and this project can be ideal as the first computer that you can yourself make from the comfort of your home and there are absolutely no limits when it comes to the improvisation of the same at last we will see about the autonomous theft proof delivery robot for food and e-commerce as you all know this is the generation of robotics and automation and moreover the covid pandemic has increased the need of touch free interactions so to boost e-commerce and food deliveries without the spread of inf infections due to human contact we can use an autonomous delivery robot system this robot is designed with a raspberry pi board to ensure the complete working it is controlled by a four wheel drive and it is remotely operated via a rf remote it has an upper section to carry packages on it that can be opened only by intended recipients the anti theft mechanism eliminates the risk of any robot theft and ensures human like delivery this is this uh, project is also equipped with others like an ultrasonic sensor to avoid dashing into people or objects within a specified range there is also a control team behind the scene to monitor the robot directions via a remote camera that is situated on the robot itself to easily navigate and check for any theft attempts 
the main thing is that it consists of a speaker to interact with the customers and make a sound to alert them to open the door when the robot arrives at their doorstep. A facial recognition system can also be used to identify the customer's face. And as an improvement, we can even have cash on delivery option where the customer can pay using GPA or any other digital transaction method. Once the robot receives the confirmation, the delivery can take place. So yeah, things like this can eventually improve the project to another level. So basically in this application, the hour of control with long range camera allow it to deliver as well as what any theft attempts using the onboard siren systems. It will be able to deliver foods and packages up to few kgs depending on the motor drive system it uses. I'm sure that this is definitely going to happen one way or the other. And by other, I mean through drones. So I will leave that topic of discovery to you guys. To conclude, Raspberry Pi is a very versatile and a useful tool. The above use cases depicted. Students of computer science, electronics, and similar discipline must definitely spend some time learning the school skill. They would enjoy and also become very good at the fundamentals of computer programming and hardware technologies. A lot of fun project activities and even college level competitions can be won by having a sound knowledge on Raspberry Pi. Hope you guys have enjoyed the session. Thank you.